By the end of this century, as many as 13 million Americans will be forced to move because of rising sea levels, flooding, and erosion. But even though this wave of climate migration is coming right toward us, the federal government has no plans for how to deal with it. And some parts of the U.S. are already losing ground to the sea. In Alaska, 31 villages, home to about 18,000 people, are in danger of disintegrating. And for one village, there's no time left. Southwest wind 35 knots. Seas 15 feet. Oh. Worst means uh, the water will be higher than normal. Thank you for calling the Alaska Weather Information Line. I'm looking at the piece of land that looks like it broke off, but it might be the lowland over there. No. Down now. Della Carl lives in Utah, a small native village of roughly 400 people on the western coast of Alaska. We don't have much time. We don't want the high waters, especially when it's windy, like last night. It erodes much faster. Usually, at this time of year, the ground is frozen solid, which would prevent storms like this one from eating away at the land. But it hasn't snowed yet. In the morning, after the storm, Della assessed the damage. Every time a piece of land breaks off, when I'm staying over at my uncle's, I can hear it and I can feel it. You can feel it? What do you mean by you can feel it? At the house shakes a little. The house shakes. At one point, a big chunk of land broke off and it was felt and heard all across the village. Because of climate change, the permafrost under Newtok has been melting and then eroding for years. Since the village was founded in the 1950s, it's lost nearly a mile of coastline. According to the Army Corps of Engineers, houses could begin to fall into the water within the year. There's 40 feet of land standing between the first house and the shoreline. During a storm in early October, Newtok lost 10 feet in just four days. Do you feel threatened by this? Oh yeah, uh, especially because I live so close. I. I I think we have less than a year. If the winds keep coming, if the rain keeps coming. What happens if your uncle's house isn't livable in anymore? We would have to go somewhere else. And where would you go? Wherever we can. In the 1950s, to comply with a law requiring educational facilities for Native children, the federal government built a school at the center of what is now Utah. Morning. But in doing so, the government changed the culture forever. Native Alaskans, who used to be seasonally nomadic, became static and permanently settled by the coast. Nearly 75 years later, the school is the only building in the village with running water. Now, I'm gonna give you your chance to brush your teeth, so this group right here, go ahead. And as more land erodes, it's also in danger. In 1996, the people of Newtok voted to move the entire village. Seven years later, they agreed on a piece of land nine miles away, on higher and sturdier ground, called Murtarvik. And they've been trying to build that new village ever since. The one thing that's missing is money to actually finish it. The person in charge of coordinating Newtok's relocation is Romy Cadiente. How many houses do you have built? Uh, we got about, and I would say about four right now, five. Why can't everybody from Utah move here right now? Funding is an issue. You know, we have state and federal agencies that are very, very supportive, but the funding is just not there. Utah's residents have spent years trying to get funding to relocate. You guys got what you need? So far, they've gathered about $40 million from multiple agencies. They've used that money to get started on construction. Residents here take a lot of pride in building their own village. The problem is, the funding they've received still falls short of the total amount they'd need, an estimated $130 million. In January of this year, FEMA denied Newtok's request for a major disaster declaration. The agency told Vice News that the funding the village requested was 
designed to address catastrophic damage occurring as a direct result of a specific disaster event. In short, erosion and permafrost melt happening over a number of years doesn't qualify. FEMA isn't the only agency that's reacted this way, and that's the crux of the problem. In the U.S., there is no state or federal system in place for relocating Americans displaced by climate change. For the 30 other Alaskan villages facing the same threat, New Talk's success or failure will set a precedent. The following week, New Talk's Village Council traveled to Anchorage to attend a meeting with representatives from 11 federal and state agencies, including the EPA and the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Okay, we are going to go ahead and get started because it's 1.30 now. We've got a really full agenda. This is the New Talk Planning Group. Uh, for those of you that haven't seen it, New Talk's residents have been attending meetings to discuss the relocation for years. This is a congressional issue because Congress has not envisioned a situation that New Talk is facing, the slow-moving disaster. That day, the Village Council was determined to find out why a request for another FEMA grant, one that they hoped they might qualify for, hadn't been approved. Uh, what they're saying Mike Wallery, New Talk's lawyer, sparred with Kim Stewart very, very of Alaska Homeland Security. And our understanding is that FEMA had approved funding and that the state never submitted the request. The application was not complete, which is why we did not submit it to FEMA. The, the application was never you accepted. You have not explained FEMA. why it was incomplete. Right, which, which we can talk about. And, it's and been almost an two audio months. Audio. No, in order to uh, take care of American people, you know, somebody's got to be changed, yeah. modified, make it better, make it work. I don't know. We don't, we're not going to come up with an answer at this meeting right now, but I would like to propose that we have um, some side meetings in between the next planning group meeting that we have, but you're not going to be able to buy any more time past this year. By the end of the meeting, the one thing that had become obvious is that U.S. policies haven't caught up to climate change yet. And for new talk, that means there's still no clear path forward. It's going to take millions of dollars to move New Talk. Mm -hmm. Why should that money be spent on moving a couple hundred people? There's going to be a point in time where the village cannot sustain itself anymore. Mm -hmm. And what do you do with these people? Where do you take them? What happens to their identity? What happens to their culture? These are part of the U.S. people that needs to take care of. But not only that, what happens to the rest of us? If we cannot get this right, what happens to the rest? <laughs> 